In this episode, we're going to show you how I would use EQ to make a dialogue sound a lot better, a lot sweeter. In this case, we're using Adobe Audition, but you can use any digital audio workstation app, any video editing app, nonlinear editor, Final Cut Pro, Premiere, so on and so forth. Here's what it sounds like from the start. Here's another recording. In this case, I think a really good example of what a microphone voice combination sounds like that doesn't match. <laughs> this is my voice on the Senken Cos 11D. Okay, that's where we're starting. Let's go ahead and open our equalizer. I'm going to come up to effects, come down to filter and EQ, and I'm going to choose the parametric equalizer. This gives us a lot of flexibility to choose the frequencies that we need. First thing I do is I turn on the high pass filter. I just want to get rid of anything below 60 hertz roughly. There's really not anything in the human voice below there. That's just noise from the room, potentially air conditioning, things like that. We'll get rid of it. Same with the low pass filter. There's really not a lot of content in voice above 18 kilohertz. So we're going to go ahead and turn that on and leave it at its default settings. All right. Now the strategy from here is first of all, I want to get rid of the harshness in my voice and then I want to sweeten it up. So to find the harshness, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do, take one of these mid frequencies here and boost it by 9 dB. And I also want to make it narrower by changing this Q setting in this case to 20. So I've got this really narrow kind of surgical tool that I can use. And what I want to do is I'm boosting it so I can hear the really bad stuff, the really harsh stuff and pick it out very easily. And then once I've found it, I will cut. I will change this plus 9 dB to minus 4 or 5 dB. We'll kind of play it by ear. Now, the important thing here, you have to use your ears to find these things. There's no magic numbers I can give you. There's no magic settings I can give you. You have to use your ears. So get the best set of headphones you can, put them on. If you don't have any right now, put this video in your watch later list, come back then, and let's go. I'm gonna go ahead and start playing, sweeping back and forth, and let's find the harshness. Here's another recording. In this case, I think a really good example of what a microphone voice combination sounds like that doesn't match. <laughs> this is my voice on the Senken Cos 11D. Great microphone used in tons of movies and television shows. Sounds great on a lot of people's voices, just doesn't sound great on mine. But not everything is lost because that's where equalization in post comes in. Okay, we'll pause there. You hear the difference there? Let me go ahead and play it with this turned off and then I'll turn it back on. You can hear with and without. We'll start with it off. So I'm giving you an audio sample here that we can use to show you how I would approach EQing this to make it sound a lot better. Okay, so far it's a somewhat subtle effect. You can hear the difference if you're using good headphones. Let's keep going. I'm gonna keep finding additional frequencies that may be problematic. I'll do the same thing, boost by 9 dB, narrow it up, setting the Q to 20. Let's go ahead and play, and I'm gonna start sweeping till I find another frequency that's really not sounding good. Here's another recording. In this case, I think a really good example of what a microphone voice combination sounds like that doesn't match. <laughs> this is my voice on the Senken Cos 11D. Great microphone used in tons of movies and television shows. Sounds great on a lot of people's voices, just doesn't sound great on mine. But not everything is lost because that's where equalization in post comes in. So I'm giving you an audio sample here that we can use to show you how I would approach EQing this to make it sound a lot better. Okay, can you hear the difference now? Let me go ahead and play it with those two turned off and then with them turned on. Here's another recording. In this case, I think a really good example of what a microphone voice combination sounds like that doesn't match. <laughs> this is my voice on the Senken cost. Okay, we got rid of a lot of that mid-range harshness. And you don't even need to know specifically what frequencies those, those are. You just need to, again, boost by 9 dB, narrow your Q to 20, sweep back and forth until you found the really nasty stuff, cut. In this case, I ended up cutting by about 6 dB on those two, and then widen the Q back up. In this case, I went back down to 2. On this one, I went a little bit wider to 1.3. You can hear, again, it took out a lot of that harshness. So it takes a while to kind of develop your ear and be able to hear this stuff. Stick with it, you will definitely be able to do it. Just wear some good headphones and go at it. Now that we have that major harshness taken care of, I wanna sweeten things up a little bit. So I'm gonna probably do a little bit of bass boost. My voice sounds a little bit thin in this particular microphone. And I'm also not hearing as quite as much articulation as I might like, so I'll also probably do some boosting in the high frequencies. Let's go ahead and I'll run through it 
demonstrate it, and then we'll come back and talk about it a little bit more. It's 11D. Great microphone used in tons of movies and television shows. Sounds great on a lot of people's voices, just doesn't sound great on mine. But not everything is lost because that's where equalization in post comes in. So I'm giving you an audio sample here that we can use to show you how I would approach EQing this to make it sound a lot better. Here's another recording. In this case, I think a really good example of what a microphone voice combination sounds like that doesn't match. <laughs> this is my voice on the Senken Koss 11D. Great microphone used in tons of movies and television shows. Sounds great on a lot of people's voices, just doesn't sound great on mine. But not everything is lost because that's where equalization in post comes in. So I'm giving you an audio sample. Okay. So we've added some of that articulation back. Now, in this case, this is a slightly different thing. It's not the typical kind of peak type of point on the equalizer. Instead, this is what's called a high shelf. It's represented here. So if I actually turn this off, you can see basically everything above about seven kilohertz, it just pushes all of it up. And so that's how that's working there. Go ahead and turn our low, our low pass back on. And then I also added a little bit of bass down here at 124 hertz. I think a lot of times if you're feeling like a particular voice through a particular microphone is sounding a little thin and it needs a little more bass, for men's voices somewhere in the 124, but again, use your ears to, to hear where it works best for the particular voice that you're EQing. And then I think a lot of times for women, a little bit higher than that, probably in the, maybe the, 200 range start and kind of sweep it back and forth until it sounds like it has the weight that you want it to have. So there's an example of how to use EQ to kind of sweeten the sound. Let's go ahead and play back a little bit of it with none of the EQ and then I'll turn the EQ on. So we'll start with it off. Here we go. Here's another recording. In this case, I think a really good example of what a microphone voice combination sounds like that doesn't match. <laughs> this is my voice on the Senken Koss 11D. Great microphone used in tons of movies and television shows. So there's a quick example of how to use EQ to sweeten the sound of your dialogue. Hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those down below. And if you've not already subscribed, make sure you do that. And we'll be sure to get you more great videos on how to improve your lighting and sound for video. Talk to you soon.